Well, good Monday morning, Sonder crew. It is so good to see you. Um, welcome to your weekly setup. I am Jennifer Ogilvie, and I'm coming to you from a very rainy, cold, icky, gross <laughs> Dallas, Texas area. Um, I, you know, I'm trying to walk every day. That isn't going to be happening today, but we're together. So I've got lots of sunshine and I'm glad to welcome you joining me on the call this morning. You've got team Jennifer in the house. Jennifer's coming to us from Minnesota. She's popping on and giving you a wave. Um, you know, we always like to work together because it's central time zone. We're both in the same time zone and we don't have to do math <laughs> to log on. Um, so anyway, it's very good to welcome you. If you have any questions along the way this morning, drop them in that chat and Jennifer will do her best to answer them Get or get you pointed in that right direction, um, anything like that. And then um, make sure that chat is set to everyone. If you see to host and panelists, that's fine, but only Jennifer and myself will be able to see that. And we do a lot of sharing in Sonder Club. So I'm wondering, are there any um, first time Monday morning people joining us today? Um, give us a hello in, or a me in the chat. Oh, I do see some first timers. We want to give you a big welcome, welcome. I um I don't know if you're brand new to Silk and Sonder or just brand new to the socials, but we love, love, love our setups because it's that accountability piece of helping us take this beautiful journal and then making it work in our lives. So um, I love that you have carved out this time you made an appointment and then we have lots of long time. I saw lots of familiar names in the chat. So we have lots of um, tenured folks who will drop ideas in the chat this morning. Um, so that's also a really neat thing about setting up together is that we can give each other and share um, ideas to help this tool work best in our lives. Now, if you are here for the very first time, I'm going to tell you, you are invited to use these pages in your journal just as they are. But I'm also going to give you lots of ways to repurpose spaces that um, with examples from our fellow Silk and Sonder family. And it will maybe, you know, you'll you'll catch on to something like, oh, well, I am a gardener. I'm going to change this space up to be about all the things that I do in my garden, my prep, my work, what I need to buy. Um that kind of stuff. So we're going to give lots and lots of examples. And, and speaking of that, you may want to grab your phone or get those uh, screenshot keys ready on your keyboard. Because if you see something that speaks to you, you may want to capture that so you can go back and visit it later. Also, like the other socials that we attend, they're always recorded and you'll be able to access them at any time on our private YouTube channel. And so um, that's also another way to go back and look at something like, oh, I think somebody said something about that and Jennifer had that example. Um, you can go back and look and see how that will work in your life. So I have shared the quote that you see on the screen before. Um, and I just think it's, it's, it's just lovely to consider that's what winter is an exercise in remembering how to still yourself and then how to compliantly back to life again. You know, we're kind of in these dark, cold days or, or the majority of us um, experience this kind of gloomy weather, kind of the blahs. Um, and yet that is a season that we can easily embrace slowing down, kind of taking stock of our lives. What do we need? What do we want? What do we wish for those more vibrant months of spring and summer? So um, anyway, I just wanted to share that quote. It, it really spoke to me. 
uh, this month. So let's let's start taking a look at all the things we're going to do today. Now, if you're here for the first time, you are seeing our Silk and Sonder Community Guidelines. That's just a reminder that this is always a safe space. We take care of each other. It's positive, um, no bullying, no hate speech. Um, we actually had somebody cr crash in last night and drop some words in the chat boom, you'll get ousted because <laughs> we do keep this space positive and uplifting. Um, also, we do some deep, deep digs into our journal from time to time, as you well know. And um, just that bottom reminder, you know, always remember to keep your mental wellness front and center. And if something just hits, mm, you're not comfortable with it right now, Give yourself the space to work on it when you're in the headspace to do that, right? Nobody's going to make you do this. We want you to take very good care of yourself front and center. Now, I will tell you from time to time, some themes are, some of our monthly themes are harder to work on than the other ones. But a little tip is um, if it feels hard, then know that you are doing the work and, um, and that's, that's good. You're getting to know yourself better. And so even though they're tricky, um, they help us grow the most. So this month's theme, as we know, is ambition. We started our time together with Dolly pouring herself a cup of ambition. Um, and it's interesting because as an early retiree, I'm kind of like, well, how much, how much ambition um, do I have? So I'm really enjoying sort of embracing the theme this month and kind of thinking of it through the lens of um this new season in my life right that i'm i'm not working i'm not i'm not in charge of anybody anymore um so i'll be exploring what ambition looks like i'm i'm excited about that and ambition the nice thing about it is that it's different for everybody and you get to decide what are those dreams that you're going to chase that you have ambition for and um that's you know, this isn't about anybody else. This is about your journey. And so just, you know, just that reminder um, that it's about you. So every uh, weekly setup, we have what's called the mind map. And we challenge each other with answering questions, doing journal prompts each week based on the monthly theme. Alrighty, so last week was week one. So if you weren't with us, that's okay. You can capture this screenshot and go back and take a look at that. And then um, this will be week two that we're working at, on. We're going to do our Rosebud Thorn Reflection. We do that every single week, kind of do a look back at last week. What, what went well? What was not so great? What do we want to bring forward? And then we'll do our weekly setup pages with a ton of examples. And again, if you see something that speaks to you, capture that. Capture that screenshot. Um, don't, don't feel overwhelmed with that. So this month, we're going to reflect on the different aspects of ambition and how you see it playing out in your life, what you notice. And like I mentioned, four weekends, four <clears throat> weekly setups. And then this week's question is sometimes people feel like life is not fair or that they can't get what they're wanting. Um, how do you think people who achieve great things think about life and ambition? All righty. So how, so that's just, that's the question I wrote in my journal. I just wrote that second part. How do I think people who achieve great things about life and, you know, <clears throat> how do they frame out that ambition? And I've got a couple of things that I wanted to share with you. And I, I loved this illustration because, um, you know, when we are looking out into the world and we're seeing success and people have strived through their ambition, we forget that there's a lot of stuff that goes along with um, chasing that ambitious pursuit. There is that idea of being persistent, that failure is going to happen and be embraced. And we learn from that, that there are sacrifices that have to be um, made for that. You know, you, you might have to 
change one thing for another. Um, there's going to be disappointments. We don't see that, right? We see the success, but there was disappointment along the way. Dedication, hard work, good habit, all those things that people don't see. And so I, I framed my response out Um kind of the same thing. I, I feel like you've always got to have a growth mindset, learn from mistakes, willing to try new things, open to suggestions, um, bringing in that community, be comfortable in your own skin, know who you are. They like themselves, right? They advocate for all. They're not selfish. They, um, you know, they like, they like to advocate for those underdogs. They believe in themselves, uh, inspired by others. They stay curious. They, they feel the feels, but they don't get stuck in, in the ones that aren't so great. And they are grateful. They show gratitude. And so, um, my mind map, I actually am doing on page 38 this month. That's that quote page. And I just divided it into four sections to do the journal responses. You can do this in a blank page in your journal. Um, maybe use that definition page, quote page, like I did. Uh, perhaps the weekly scratch pad is every week you'll respond there. Sticky notes. Um, yes, I'm going to go back. Trish, Trixie asked, well, I, I'm going to go back and forth through these slides while you work on you, kind of what comes to your mind when you think about this question. Um, and then, uh, you know, just a little inspiration from that little gal. Ambition is good. It's what fuels your dreams. So maybe frame that out into chasing those dreams. And then the little bottom quote there on the bottom left, I want to see what happens if I don't give up. So let me put on a little bit of music and I'll go back and forth between all of these slides so you can capture both weeks questions and take a look at that graphic about that iceberg. Let us know kind of what's coming to your mind as you respond to this prompt.
Thank you for taking a moment to do this reflection. Um, you know, we can learn, we learn from each other in Sonder Club, but also from what we see in our world, people that we see that rise to success. Um, some of you shared, you know, you're, you're swapping out um, one person's leaving a job to, to stay home. And so ambition's going to look different. And I love that. Again, we claim it for ourselves. And let me drop that chat. Um, I cut and pasted. Jennifer <clears throat> shared that she's listening to a book called Many Habits. I put it back in the chat again so it would show up. Many Habits, Smaller Habits, Bigger Results with that link there. And we're actually going to talk a little bit about habits when we get to our habit tracker this morning. So I wanted to, um, you know, call that out. Thanks for sharing that, that Jennifer, because I think we all want to make sure that we have habits that are serving us, um, you know, the best that they can. And I also neglected to say, if you don't have your journal, it's okay. You can take notes this morning. If you're waiting, like it's going to hit the mailbox, um, take notes and go back and do that. So let's, let's now turn to page 30 in our journal. This is going to be our reflection from last week. And we have this little rosebud thorn reflection every single week. And it really helps us be mindful about our gratitude and about, um, you know, saying, welcoming those things that are roses, that things that we're grateful for, what went well this past week, um, you know, what's positive, what's, what's just the things that are making you smile. And then we have those buds, those emerging opportunities and, um, you know, something that we're looking forward to that gives us that motivation to, to keep going on. I love the buds. And sometimes my buds will be as simple as it's, it's a new week. That's one of the reasons I love my Silk and Sonder journal because it's a new journal every month. So that new fresh start just does something to that dopamine for me when I open it up. And then every week is a brand new week. So sometimes my buds are as simple as that. And then the thorns, of course, are exactly that. They're thorns. Um, what is something that challenged you that caused stress, maybe something that you had no control over and it's just really eating at you. And some thorns are temporary and then some thorns are hanging out with us. Some may be, have to do with health, either for ourselves or of a loved one. And you're taking a journey that's not so much fun. So we have kind of those temporary thorns and then we have those that are sort of hanging out with us. And I think it's important to reflect on that and put it on paper and it will help us find, you know, where are the little silver linings? Where, where is the gratitude in this harder journey that I'm taking? And so, um, uh, oh, did I not put the right page number? No. Uh, let's see. Yes. Pa week one, it's on page 30 and it's our weekly reflections. It says it's over. Um, it should be right here on this column there. All righty. Um, and so for me, my Rose, we had a holiday tea. Uh, we call ourselves my daughter-in-law, my daughter, my granddaughter, and me. We call ourselves the old girl V's instead of Ogilvy's. And we had a little holiday tea that, that I went to with my daughter-in-law, my little granddaughter. And it was just magical seeing that through her little eyes. Um, web free Wednesday is my emerging bud. I am doing kind of a social Sabbath on those days where I'm not checking Facebook or Instagram or getting lost in my phone. I'm putting it really big on my Wednesdays because I find myself just going down these rabbit holes and not spending my time wisely. So I'm, I'm just trying to um, give myself one day and hopefully that will eventually grow into more days and more better habits. And then um, my thorn was just, I kind of lost my motivation after the holidays. We got the Christmas stuff put away and I'm just kind of blah. And um, like I have a table that's right here that is just a hot mess, right? And I need to tackle it. And I've looked at it, looked at it, looked at it. So I, I'm just lacking motivation, the weather, that kind of stuff. So I'm going to be do, doing some habits. Let me put on some music while you work on this. Um, share your rosebuds, thorn, your roses, your buds, and your thorns. And um, let us celebrate your roses and hold space with you through those thorns. And 
I'll be back to check on you. this reflection I love reading um some of your roses are just so sweet and so simple you know baking a loaf of bread playing a new game it's it's all about how we frame out um our you know our every day to day to day things if if you hopped on a little bit late and you you're joining us Jennifer put in the chat the question for week number two's mind map. So you might want to grab that from, from the chat. I know Monday, Monday mornings are kind of tricky to get going, right? Um, so thank you for sharing those roses and those buds and those thorns. And yes, Trixie, our old girl, that's what we call our group, our group uh, chat, you know, you know, when we text each other. <laughs> Or, you know, when it's just us and not the stinky boys. Um, so this week we're going to set up pages 32 and 33, which is week two of 2024. Now, 
Again, you are invited to use these pages just as they are, but here are a ton of things um, that you can do to kind of repurpose any of the spaces um, that, you know, might speak to you. And so you might want to capture this list to explore later. Also remember, I, I keep mentioning you're going to get a record, you'll have access to this recording as well as other recordings. So you can go back and check that out and do a pause and, and take a look. But this is not all exclusive, definitely, but it is a lot of suggestions. Um, this list is a lot of suggestions that Sonder family members have um, done in their journals. So just thought, you know, put it in one place one place for you to capture. So we like to start our week with claiming a feeling. How do you want to feel this week? And there's a lot of ways you can do this. You can do a little doodle. You can use one word. You can find a quote. Maybe there was an affirmation that last week that really spoke to you and you, you capture that affirmation to sort of frame out every day this week. Um, maybe there's something that one thing you really want to focus on. So it's really up to you how you set this space up, but it is really kind of calling out to the universe. Here's Here's what I'm claiming this week. And Rachel's already dropping in the chat. I'd love to know. Rachel wants to feel motivated. How do you want to feel? I think I'm going to tag on <laughs> Rachel because I've just had that blonde. I need to get my motivation back. I need to get that. that maybe mojo will be my, my word. I see courageous, grateful, and happy. Bright. That's a good one, Trixie, for these gloomy weather uh, days that we have renewed and refreshed. Those are great words to embrace that front end of a new year. Um, back to normal. I love that one. Yes, just back to my good old self. Gentle and loved, motivated, confident, artistically confident. I love that one. Um, active. You know, you guys are claiming your week. And I love that. So we're going to let this word or the, these statements that you're sharing sort of frame out the rest of our week. And we're going to start by looking at those weekly three major goals. Now, always know you don't have to do three. You can do one. If your week is crazy and you've got the one big thing, work on that. I'm going to share lots of examples from Sonder family. And, and then when you're working on these sections, um, I'll go back and forth. So we're going to take a look at our goals and then also that to-do list space. And we'll work on that together. Um, you know, be sure you go back, take a look. Did you set intentions for the month? Make sure that your goals are aligning with those intentions so that, you know, I, when I first started using my journal, I would do these beautiful intentions and then I'd forget to go back and look at page nine. And that should have been what guided my whole month. So make sure you're holding yourself accountable to that. Um, you know, just check if have you done a vision board this year, put your vision board where you see it when you're setting your weekly goals to make sure that you're envisioning those things from your vision board. Lots of folks like to break these down into three categories, like I'm going to do something for work, something for community, something for home. Um, again, I've got lots of examples to show you. And then finally, a reminder, if you've chosen a word of the year, um, you know, is how does your word of the year fit in to your weekly goals? Oops, I went the wrong way there. Okay. So here are some examples of these, this section with those major goals. So you can see there's how folks want to feel and then their goals are underneath. And I wanted to just point out some things that are kind of fun to look at. If you'll see that second one that says calm and you go right below it, there are the three major goals. The first one is yoga every day um, and then finish and file you know, some, some, uh, it looks like tax forms will turn off, um, and three days to do that and celebrate bir their birthday purposely. But look at the yoga every day, drew in seven little boxes so that there is that gamification of going back and giving yourself that check mark or coloring that in. Um, that's those kinds of things are, um, very, very good for you because when you gamify something, you get, hits of all those good, happy hormones. And we want 
as many of those as we can get. Um, so let's keep looking. Here's again, three categories, left brain, right brain, no brain, delete, delight, and then frog. Frog is kind of that thing that we don't want to do, right? You know, there's a eat the frog, eat the toad, get that, get that out of the way. Um, there's somebody in the middle did four goals having to do with feeling motivated. We There's our motivation example um, for those of you who are grabbing that word. Um, and so there's a goal in for reading, a goal for writing, a goal for moving, and a goal for work. And then um, I love the idea of taking your to-dos. Now, I, I don't, my to-dos go in my weekly spread, but um, if you'll notice these two examples have there, there's the mind, body, soul um, goals and the to do's have been taken over or they, they're they connected, right? They're connected with the goals. So the one at the top mind, either meditate or take time to reflect. And, um, and so how do you, how do you do that? Will you go and you're present, you become a listener and observer and you're curious. So kind of change that up instead of a to be, it's it's those um, those things that are going to support that goal. And then the one below it is, the, if you'll see, they instead of to do's, it says no. So weekly no's. And really, you know, trucking into that mind goal, I, I'm not going to do the multitasking. I'm not going to overthink and I'm going to stop refusing help. So just being very intentional with tying all of those together. <clears throat> and then there's a lot of ways you can just repurpose this space. You can see those if you if you don't want to do those goals. Maybe you do a goal each day. Um, and so that goes in your weekly spread. But here's an example of how someone took the, the, the how do I want to feel and the weekly goals and put them together there. They're going to track their screen time and they're doing a little weekly expense so that it's right there when they open up that weekly um, spread. So again, you know, you make the journal work for you. All righty. And then the to do's. And I love this because I'm a big to do list person. I keep a master to do list with all the th anyway. Um, but I love I made a huge to do list for today. I'm just trying to figure out who's going to do it. And that was, you know, pot calling kettle black <laughs> because I've got all the all the things. Um, but here are some hacks to set this space up. Again, dividing that up. What is a need? What is a want? What is a hope to do? And I'm going to go back through all of these slides while you work on these. This is called the Eisenhower Matrix. If you have a to-do list that's super long, this helps you prioritize those things that are most important and most urgent. So I'm going to encourage you to maybe investigate the Eisenhower Matrix. Um, I know this is very helpful for a lot of folks who maybe they use it for their work um, outside of their home. And then... Again, some more ways to divide the space up into like AM and PM to do's or your work to do's in your home to do's, uh, just lots of great ideas. And you can repurpose this into being um, intentional about how you want to be. There's some beautiful examples there, just that, that putting it pen to paper, a lot of power there to remind yourself of the things that you are working on. And then... Um, you know, I do a weekly to-da list. I actually leave that to-do list blank because I have my to-do list in my weekly spread. But all the extras I do, I drop that into my to-do list. Again, for that celebration, that dopamine hit, um, it kind of goes along with the folks who can relate to this quote. Sometimes I accomplish a task, then write it on my to-do list and then cross it off just to get that adrenaline rush. It's a real thing. Um, so there you go. And then maybe you need to make a to-don't list. Are there things that are not serving you that you need to um, get rid of? So let's go and take a look at these sections and then we'll jump into that habit and activity tracker. Um, let us know what are your goals this week? What are your to-dos? And we'll, I'll be back to check in on you in just a moment.
right. Thanks for starting to think about your goals and the to-dos that you have on your list for this week. Um, and again, I know that we have a lot of information that comes up through these setups and it's so tricky to, <laughs> to capture it all, but no worries. Again, you can always go back and look at a recording. And then once you get your groove with your journal, you kind of, you come here because it's your appointment with yourself and you sort of already know exactly what you want to do. So we're going to take a look at that bottom section on this page, the habit and activity tracker. If you're brand new, you know you have the big habit wheel at the front of your journal. Those are those habits that we want to do most days of January. But the habit and activity tracker each week is great because it can be um, set up to meet the needs that you have that week. And one of my habits here in the weekly is always go check your monthly habit tracker. And then I, I check that off, but it can be varied each month. So I want to talk very quickly about habits and establishing new ones, because, you know, this is that time of year and we want to do it all and, and, you know, be this, have all these new things going on. But I want to remind you that um, habits are tricky, right? It takes a while for them to kind of take hold. So be patient with yourself. And this information is from the Atomic Habits book, James Clear. Um, if you haven't read that book you and, and habits are something you're struggling with, please grab that Atomic Habits by James Clear. It's excellent. But he reminds us we have to show up, right? We have to be intentional with that. It's not going to just happen. Um, and, and by putting it in your journal and holding yourself accountable, you're showing up. A new habit should take less than two minutes. In other words, don't bite off more than you can chew because then we're not setting ourselves up for success if, if we're going just too big, right? And his suggestion is start with a gateway habit. So find something um, that, you know, is, is a little bit smaller um, that will motivate you to the bigger habit, the bigger goal. So like if you wanted to walk 10,000 steps every day, then the gateway habit to that goal is put put on my running shoes or maybe put put your workout gear by the door so when you leave for work it's ready and you don't come home right after work you go straight to the gym um keep the house tidy goal becomes put one item of dirty clothes in the laundry um become a better partner uh looks like make my cup of my partner a cup of coffee every morning. So a small thing to do to support that goal. And a great way to frame this out is to take something that you already do, like maybe make your bed and you write yourself this sentence on this day. After I make my bed, I will start a load of laundry right? If the laundry is something that you're working on. So you pair it with something that you're already doing, that you're successful with. And you write that maybe on your daily spread. That's just a, a really good little takeaway um, to, to establish those new habits. This space is so great because you can choose the number of times you want to do a habit. You can use that goal there if you want, or you can ignore the goal. Um, it's it's really up to you. You'll see there's a few that people have just put stickers over or they have widened out, uh, you know, use the correction tape to just not even have the goal there. They're just tracking. Um, I take a medication three times a week and I circle those days for that medication because it'll it gets I get confused when I took it or not. Um, notice the one in the upper left. They are just giving themselves goals of minutes, time that they're going to pour into mindfulness and meditation, 10 minutes. And then you track, you just check off when you do that. So I, I love this. And, and Jennifer just said, um, you'll see in the chat, she only does like three habits and Jamie, don't worry. I'm going to go through all of these while you're working on, on this. I'll go back and forth between these suggestions. And then I have just kind of dumped a lot of those habit and activity suggestions for inspiration here. Let me put on a song. Um, you work on this, let us know. How do you use this section? Do you do the goals? Do you not do the goals and just check when things happen? How how does it work for you? And I'll be back in. Check.
it's also very important to remember you don't have to fill in all the lines here. Maybe your week is going to be crazy and you want to track two things about self-care because the rest of your week has already been determined for you and what's what's going on. So now we're going to take a look at page 33. And I love page 33 because there's all these spaces here that can be used again, just as they are. But this is the page that tends to get um, repurposed for those things that are in your life. So we're going to go through all of these pages the or these sections, and I'll show you some repurposing, um, some, you know, and then we'll put on music and let you work on this whole page. So let's start by looking at the meal plan. And I don't, unfortunately, have the new image of the meal plan, but this is what it looked like before January's edition. Um, we had that breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snack um, data put in there. And now we just have these beautiful blank spaces for um, each day, Monday, Tuesday uh, on the way. And I will tell you that is because of feedback from you all. So be sure that you're filling out those surveys because it, it, again, it takes a while. Sometimes these things are already mocked up and ready to go to the printer, but folks are saying, I don't want those letters there. And, and because you guys um, did that, you said, I will leave those blank so that we can repurpose the um we changed we changed that up so can Sandra listen to you guys so again this is a great space because it's just these nice we love we just love the size of these boxes we can do so many things with them um there's a list of some ideas I know lots of folks will just put their um, main meal of the day the like the family meal um over in the mind body health plan because they they're only really planning through that one meal um so folks use this space for learnings, for maybe doing snacks and focusing on, okay, I'm eating a snack. How am I feeling? Right. Really trying to make that good intentional, um, eating stuff happen. Um, an energy tracker there where you're, you're giving yourself, um, how are you feeling? Assigning numbers, um, those water drops that you see there are great for tracking the beverages. A lot of folks will color code those. So brown um, for coffee, uh, blue for water, that kind of thing. But they're also a great tracking thing. If you did something, if you're measuring something on a scale of one to eight and you can color in those dots for that. Um, let's see, lots of, lot, again, lots of examples. I'll go through this, but you know what you need in your life, right? Maybe this is where you do your um, weekly chores, right? It can be changed up. So going right next door to that is that little mind body health plan. Now this one in my journal gets repurposed a lot because this is sort of like, what am I doing for Jennifer this week? And sometimes it has to do with learnings, making space for crafts. Sometimes it's that kind of external self-care, like I'm going to do my nails and a face mask and try a new moisturizer. Um, so it varies from week to week how I use this space. You can see the little bingo board up there on the top left. We love a bingo board. Again, we're leaning into that gamification that makes things happen um, and gives us that good rush of happy, happy hormones. So um, I, I, I always have a bingo every week and it goes in my shopping list, but it, it's that whole idea of, of um, that celebration. Here are some just fun ideas for this space or to put in one of these other spaces on your page. Don't worry, I'm going to go through these while you work on them. Um, maybe you'll do a challenge for the week and um, kind of lean into something like a happiness challenge or the Huga challenge, that that feeling of coziness during the winter. Perhaps you'll do a little self-esteem journal reflection. Again, here's some more intentions, um, a reflection on gratitude. There are some little mini prompts there. And then our shopping list. And again, it can be a shopping list, the things you need to get. Or some people will put don't buy, right? Because the shopping list, um, like we don't need this. I did an inventory and I know I don't need this. And that reminder of, of that. Um, I always put a bingo here. This is where I do like my tasks and my treats and some chores. 
Um, but you can see a calmness scale. Love that idea. And if you've been with me before, you, you know, I love the idea of a social check-in that's kind of in the middle at the bottom there. We're just being very intentional about every day, checking in on someone who is important in your life. So I just, I think that's a lovely way. And then that bottom square, I am loving. And this is just kind of a snapshot of what you are loving right now um, on this very day. It may be a book you're reading. It may be um, that, you know, you have a new journal. Um, just what are you loving right at this moment? So I'm going to stop talking. Let me put on some music so that we can work on the whole page. Page 33, let us know, do you repurpose anything? And if so, what do you do? How do you use these spaces? What has worked for you? Are there spaces that change every week or are you consistent? We we just want to know. Let us know and I'll be back to check on you in just a moment.
pretty good working <laughs> this morning. Um, I realized, you know, our I don't want to keep you after class. <laughs> our time, our hour always goes so fast. We always say, you know, it's faster than a treadmill hour. Love to be together. Um, yes, there is a question about ideas for the meal tracker. Um, we do not have a section in Sonder Club to go get the inspiration for the meal tracker. So that could be something that you suggest, but also you could go watch, yes, go rewatch some Sonder socials because we try to change some of our um, examples up every week. And so, you know, or keep coming to socials and um you know you'll get you'll get some inspiration from that and if you want to just go to Sonder Club and post what do you do if you repurpose your meal tracker what do you do and folks can respond to that and so we want to remind you share your weekly planner um especially if you do some repurposing to inspire one another you can share that in Sonder Club there are those QR codes i know we've got some new folks who are waiting on their journals to come. Now, the QR codes are also in the back cover of your journal. So when you get your journal, you'll have a physical um, QR code that you can hold and scan in for the app and then also um, the referral link. And if you refer to Silk and Sonder, you will get $10 and a friend will get $10 um, for doing that. If you upgrade to the annual subscription, you'll save a good chunk of money. And then we also have a social survey. So, you know, like if you'd like to see a section in the inspiration page, put that in that survey. Let customer service know they're very responsive um, to that. So make sure you're filling those out each week. I know sometimes it's like, well, I go to all the socials I can and I'm tired of filling those out. But we do appreciate that feedback. Um, Jennifer has dropped all of these links in the chat as well so that you can access that way. And then there is our um, playlist from today. I am on Spotify. So um, if you would like to go check out my Spotify, I have every month I do a new playlist um, kind of around, based around that theme as the best I can. So um, it's just kind of nice to have some background music on while you work on your journal. I'm very proud of you for carving out this time today. It's going to be a great week too. 2024. Thanks for joining us. And um, uh, we're coloring Thursday night. So join us for that social. You can bring your own coloring page. Even. We'll see you later, Sandra family. And as far as I can see, I'm losing control like a bad disease. No, I just can't get really. I've been shot down by the light police. Because every day I try to rise, but I can't succeed. Anybody find a cure for me? You can be bitter, 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 or you can be better, better, better. Great well, life gives you lemons. It's gonna be okay. No worry, little children. I don't complain. Whoa, remember your calling. To find some sugar cane. Great well, life gives you lemons. Take lemonade. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hey, come on, come on. Now every day is like a brand new year. I throw my hands up.